Hey everyone, we're obviously going to bring you a show where we get to have fun and pick apart all the silly little things that are going on around us, and we know that you count on that as a way to either process the dumb stuff that goes on during our time on this planet, uh, to escape from it entirely, or just to have a friendly couple of voices on in the background. And we are going to do that show for you today, but we want to take a moment to to mourn the pointlessly cruel loss of life at Club Q in Colorado Springs, where a gunman entered into a, a safe space, or what was hoped to be a safe space for the queer community, and took their ignorance and blind anger out on a bunch of innocent people who went to this place as their own little escape. Uh, not only were five people killed and at least 25 wounded, but this will undoubtedly send shockwaves through the entire LGBTQ community, a community that has has and continues to struggle as they desperately fight to keep the rights that they currently have. And this is a tragedy, and it, and it really does make us extremely disappointed in this country. Yeah, it should go without saying, and we know that those of you who have watched our channel for any length of time know this, but if you aren't willing to accept people for who they are, allow them to live in peace, and embrace them as fellow human beings, we don't want you as a viewer. No. Get fucked. Yeah. I hate you. And I won't, miss you, I won't miss you when you leave. Bye. And our comment section has done a pretty good job of policing that, too. They are literally policing yeah. our scene down below. Eat my shit. Mm -hmm. Anyway, having said that, there's a lot to unpack with the compounding elements that create an environment where this type of violence bubbles up. It doesn't just come out of nowhere. It, mm -hmm. uh, it stems from, uh, in this case, pretty clear sources, I would say. Yeah. Uh, even though the people behind those sources are pleading complete ignorance. I, I'm sorry, I just don't see the connection. Also, thoughts and prayers. Yeah, considering the hostile rhetoric that's been directed at queer communities, uh, in just the past year especially, I mean, forever, Yeah, obviously, but, like, it's but really ratcheted up uh, Weirdly, in there, you know, after Ogerberfell, which I can never say properly, but when same-sex marriage was legalized seven fucking years ago, I was like, okay, it seemed like... People were getting over there. Now uh, everyone's fighting battles they had previously won within the last decade. And I'm but, sure that uh, that is so infuriating. Yeah, homophobia is back. Transphobia, I mean, trans, it's always been there, but it's yeah. its having a, a real run these, these days. Anyway, the call for thoughts and prayers from the very people who have helped instigate this kind of hatred is obviously very frustrating and disheartening. And other things I can't say on this show or on Twitter Meanwhile, it's always important to look at the heroes in this situation, though. And the shining light in all of this has to be that patrons of the club, they were the ones who were able to subdue the attacker, beat the living shit out of him. Uh, in one reported case, uh, squashed them with their high-heeled shoes. Yeah, a drag queen uh, curb stomped this man with a high heel. And uh, the the man who took him down basically pistol whipped him until like he just saw took him the rent. gun from him. Like I I don't know how much uh, skull this guy's gonna have left. And um, I I have to applaud the uh, the generous show of restraint because uh, the fact that they even let this guy live is uh, pretty incredible. That's it's nicer than a lot of us would probably be in the same situation. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, the this was not. Uh, the police didn't do shit. In fact, the police showed up and arrested the guy who tackled the killer and kept him in the back of a cop car for an hour while he and everyone else around him were like, he's not the guy. He's actually the hero. Cops don't like hearing that. They're like, uh, pretty sure we're the heroes. And, um, but yeah, I mean, luckily, the, is, uh, those, those in attendance and, a, and a, uh, a security guard were able to, before things got even worse, Subdue this attacker. Anyway, here's the New York Times. At least one person inside the nightclub, Club Q, tackled and subdued the gunman, the authority said, helping to prevent further bloodshed. Mayor John Southers of Colorado Springs said that a man grabbed a handgun from the gunman and then hit him with it, subduing him. When the police burst into the club, the man was still on top of the gunman, pinning him down, Mr. Southers said. Quote, one customer took down the gunman and was assisted by another, said Matthew Haynes, one of the club's owners. Referring to the first person who acted, Mr. Haynes added, he saved dozens and dozens of lives, stopped the man cold. Everyone else was running away. He ran toward him. Um, so Colorado Gives and the Colorado Healing Fund is a verified nonprofit that provides support in the wake of tragedy, and they are directly contributing to those affected by this shooting. There are a lot of GoFundMes out there, um, and a lot of them, uh, you know, is it's great to see, but they were funded quite quickly. Yeah. And uh, the official ones have stated that the overflow will be going to this Colorado nonprofit anyway. So that's the one that we've chosen to promote. Uh, the link will be, of course, down in the description below if you want to make a donation. Um, we think it would be great. It sucks that this has to exist, but it's good that there is something in place to get um, 
help to those who are needed. So, yeah. Anyway, we know it's always pretty much impossible to, uh, you know, gracefully pivot away from us being serious to us relentlessly mocking everything. But we know that you understand. So we're, we're just going to do a, a hard cut here yeah. and get back to our regularly scheduled program. All right. All right, right now so, we're oh, back. this sucks. I hate this. Let's, okay, uh, well, uh, I don't know what happened there, but. Okay, now we're back. Yes, so we let, let's start off with a just no pressure story that's funny. It stands up to a large company and it's generally pretty harmless. Apparently the high-end retailer Guess no, that's their name. Guess. I <laughs> yeah. Uh, they have improperly acquired a license to sell clothing with designs inspired by Banksy, resulting in Banksy posting a message to his nearly 12 million followers on Instagram that reads as follows. Attention all shoplifters. Please go to Guess on Regent Street. They've helped themselves to my artwork without asking. How could it be wrong for you to do the same to their clothes? Now... Obviously, this kind of civil disobedience is awesome, especially when there's a solid justification for it. But with how viral this has gone, we are going to safely assume that uh, any standalone guest locations are probably on uh, DEFCON 3, uh, which is somewhere in the middle, I think, just playing it safe, of course. I'm a little uh, bit sleepy, but when I wake up, I'm going DEFCON 3 on <laughs> shoplifters. Yeah, uh, so we would imagine there's some heightened security, uh, specifically around this drop of clothing. And as for how this happened, obviously it's no surprise to see modern artists' most famous works attached to anything that can be printed on. And in a lot of cases, there are actual license deals with artists or their estates. Now, Bl Banksy claims that he, or whatever this collective that is Banksy, we don't know. It's probably We're all guy, Banksy. Uh, this is the guy from Massive Attack, right? Uh, that was one popular theory. Uh, but he so, died, didn't he? I don't know. Anyways, uh, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm getting it mixed up. Anyway. Uh, Banksy claims that they have never licensed uh, artwork that was created. In fact, the only thing that, we, that has, like, solidified proof of where Banksy has directly profited off of a piece of his art was when the auction went through that destroyed the art immediately yeah, after. That's cool. And it's not like it reduced the value of it because the performance is part of it. Yeah. Um, but that was like the one at auction that was facilitated by the Banksy, whatever you want to call it. Mm. Uh, there was also the stunt in Central Park where a street vendor that was, you know, set up oh, yeah. by Banksy sold actual Banksy street art but as though it was replicas to yeah. unsuspecting passersby. And now that's not to say that Banksy hasn't profited off of his or their creations, just that in a official capacity, they do keep things pretty buttoned up. And this is the exact type of thing that uh, the artist goes up against. Yeah, I'm sure Guess is like, oh no, Banksy, please don't, don't come and, t and tag our building. That would be the worst thing. Oh, geez. Oh God, I would be so sad if Banksy showed up and tagged up our, our beautiful, uh, untainted uh, guest retail location here, that'd be the worst. Oh, God, I hope he doesn't do it. We need to beat that homeless man. He's sleeping next to the Banksy spray painting. <laughs> so the company that partnered with Guess called Brandalized. Literally the most soulless name possible. Let's go Brandalized. It, it, it's so funny seeing specifically street art being like, uh, we're going to take brands and vandalizing and make it capitalism, and it's going to be awesome. So Brandalize, they, they claim to have legally acquired the license, or at least that's what they told guests. They're like, well, we gave a guy a lot of money, so uh, you're telling me that wasn't Banksy? You're, you're, you're telling me the guy down in Chelsea who has the shop that says unofficial Banksy coffee mugs would lie to us about this? Uh, here's the BBC. Copyright lawyer Liz Ward, founder of Virtuoso Legal, said guests appear to have legitimately sourced the Banksy artwork via a third party, namely Brandalized, who say they have rights to commercialize and use Banksy's artwork on goods. She said, It isn't known if Banksy approved or even knew about this deal. If he did know about it, then perhaps his comments are there to create some kind of guerrilla marketing campaign. If he didn't know about it, then he must be quite annoyed, especially as such mainstream companies and brands don't accord with his anti-establishment views. And they add that, Earlier this week, Banksy won an appeal to allow him to keep the trademark of one of his most famous images, a monkey wearing a sandwich board, at the EU Intellectual Property Office. Anyway, it's just nice to hear from Banksy. I haven't really... Uh, yeah, I feel like that'll be... Well, so Banksy did do a... Um, I guess you would call it an installation in Ukraine. Oh. Uh, so Banksy went to Ukraine, and there I think there was like six or seven pieces done out there uh, amidst literally the bombed out wreckage of cities. Um, pretty striking. Uh, Banksy's done this before uh, yeah. in Palestine. Um, but yeah, it feels like the uh, second half of Banksy's career is going to be fighting copyright. 
because I mean, initially the street artists, you put it out there and the more it's, you know, repeated, the stronger the message is until someone takes it and uh, steals it from you and uses it as profit. Well, guess, guess what? Guess you'll be hearing from our lawyers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, over now to another awe-inspiring story. By now, you're probably all very aware of just how patriotic American football, you know, that kind hand of hand egg, hand egg can be. Uh, this is the sport that was flipped on its head by athletes choosing to silently protest acts of violence, thus ruining football for uh, uh, a generations of old school. It's gone woke. Yeah. But unless you've actually been to a football game in person, you have no idea how insane it really is. In some cases, in between nearly every play, there will be some kind of military salute or an honor for the veterans or just general marketing for the armed forces. This, yeah. is, this is all without mentioning the military flyovers, parachute demonstrations, anthem reciting, all of it. Yeah, I mean, I recently took my mom to a Bucks game when I was home a few weeks ago, and the halftime show was literally a bunch of children swearing into the military on the 50-yard line. It was very odd. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will wear true things. I've never been to an NFL game. Um, you're not missing much. The no. production that goes into it is honestly a lot more entertaining than what you're seeing on the field. I, and I don't really watch the NFL at all, but I feel like it's easier to watch on TV than uh, at the game itself. You're right on all accounts. <laughs> this was a gift for my mother. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it is a legitimately odd and unsettling to see this, especially in person. But because of how much downtime there is during your average American football game, the live production can get pretty desperate for filler content. And military shit always gets a round of applause and maybe even a standing ovation. So if there is some veteran out there to thank, well, football stadiums will fall over themselves to get a backstory, a photo, and then go about honoring someone without even a second guess. Yeah. What could go wrong? Valor is so easy to steal. Yeah. Why, of all things, would someone lie about military service? Because of all the free shit. That would be unthinkable, right? Uh, no, it's actually very easy to conceive. Yeah. Well, enjoy this next story, courtesy of uh, the Military Times, by way of the Minnesota Vikings. Vikings tricked into thanking Pornstar for his service on Jumbotron. It's and you already know what Pornstar it is. <laughs> he's Johnny he's, Sims. The, uh, yeah, yeah, the master the, of the uh, skies. The, the, the man who can do and has done everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As if getting bludgeoned 40 to 3 at the hands of the Dallas Cowboys wasn't embarrassing enough, one unfortunate stadium Jumbotron operator took the Minnesota Vikings humiliation a step further by falling for a faux salute to service photo featuring a porn star. Stephen Wolf, better known by his stage name Johnny Sins, has portrayed myriad professions throughout his adult film career. In one particular film, the 43-year-old donned fatigues to play a service member. The resulting imagery, Johnny in outdated camouflage <laughs> bearing no name tape, has been deployed in the years since to trick popular personalities into thank you for your service gaffes. The U.S. Bank Stadium Jumbotron operator is the latest to fall victim, sharing one Twitter user's erroneous well wishes on the stadium's big screen for all to see. This is my cousin Joel, who served in the Army, Twitter user at KyleRules4H wrote, he has always been an inspiration and someone I look up to for his heroism. He's also a huge Vikes fan. Hashtag Skull Salute. <laughs> That's, I guess, their big thing there. Because so they, cause they, they the, in the Nordic countries, Skull is the, how they choose. Yes, and they are the Vikings. Now, uh, what's funny about this is, depending on when it was in the game, people definitely stood up and cheered for this brave hero. But that that. Bucks game, like, oh my god, people were getting their squats in. I, I'm telling you, every single break in the game, there was a thing. And then even they, they would get the players, and they'd be like, hey, do you have anyone in your extended family that's in the military? So that you would see stats on the screen that was like, you know, so-and-so fucking whatever position, uh, whose uncle uh, selflessly served in the merchant marines. Uncle? <laughs> exactly. Uncle? Yeah. You all just, you just reinvented, you invented Catholic mass. All the sitting and the standing. And the... I liked it much better when they were honoring nurses and doctors. Uh, yeah, get out of here. Uh, you had your time. Also, we banged our pots and pans for like a week, and uh, that's brought, all you get. We've brought this up before, and I want to believe that the majority of veterans that are honored during uh, 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 sports games haven't done uh, committed atrocities, but we have no fucking idea. No, you have no clue. Um, yeah, it's... Uh... It's a bit weird. 
it's a bit weird. Yeah. And also, another thing to note is a lot of veterans um, do not They make, disagree with this. Well, they yeah. just don't make this that part of their identity. It's mm -hmm. like, that's what I did in my 20s. I yes. was in the military. Why the fuck would I wear my dress blues to a football game? That would be insane. Yeah, it also, this is just another issue with uh, the power that the military has over uh, specifically sports because it's kind of like their one thing that hasn't been spoiled by everyone going, hey, this is kind of fucked up. Do you think the NFL is maybe overcompensating? Yes, uh, of course they are. Yeah. Uh, anyways, See, yeah, I swear to God, we're not vote that we're not woke. <laughs> yeah, please come back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyways, one more random story before we get into the latest with Twitter and everything else that happened this weekend. Uh, yeah. I know, I know. But now that the dust has mostly settled from the 2022 midterm elections, it's time to take a look at one specific race that did go in favor of the Democrats, and take a peek at why exactly such a result was possible. Now, it was a race between Democratic candidate Yadira Caravillo and Republican candidate Barbara Kirkmeyer. The race was extremely tight, with Caravillo narrowly winning by just one percentage point, or around 2,000 votes more than her opponent. Um, what was quickly realized, however, is that this race included arguably the funniest spoiler candidate that anyone could ask for. A sound guy for a local metal band named Dan Ward, who just told people at concerts to vote for him. And that resulted in him getting 3.9% of the total vote, which was more than enough to have tilted the final results. And the best part is, the local Republican Party is pissed, because this guy ran as a libertarian. So, he was literally a libertarian upset candidate. I'm and all about uh, propping up libertarian candidates anywhere in this country they want to run. Uh, yeah, and uh, this also, re the local Republican Party, uh, because of his affiliation to metal bands, claimed that this is like Satan incarnate who has ruined the party. So, Because, um, yeah, we're doing Satanic Panic, too. Oh, yeah, no, that's been... that again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, just here, we're just going to show you some clips from this local news report because it really says it all. Republicans thought they had the edge, but Caraveo won by less than a point. Nowhere in the picture was a third party candidate who didn't appear to campaign, but got nearly 4% of the vote. Conservative talk radio smelled a conspiracy to defeat the Republican. The Libertarian candidate in the 8th Congressional District has no campaign website. He has no social media. He has no phone number. He has no email address. He has abs no picture on, on any website. It's a protest vote, but you're not even going to see who you're voting for. It could have been Satan. <laughs> Libertarian Dan Ward, sound guy for the metal band Driven by Turmoil. He gave the finger to the establishment by pulling 3.9% of the vote, easily enough to swing the race, and about double the 1.9% average of the other Colorado Libertarians running for Congress. The Colorado Libertarian Party told us they have no idea how a guy who campaigned only through concerts did so well. Two pollsters looked at the race for us and also weren't sure. Liberal and conservative operatives from groups that don't like Republican Barb Kirkmeyer all denied that they somehow secretly boosted up the sound guy from Driven by Turmoil. Did the metal guy really swing a closely watched congressional race? Probably. And until we know what really happened, maybe we should just take a cue from his theme song. Very interesting. Yeah, and they're like... So what's your uh, like policy? And he's like, I just want to speak to the disenfranchised voters of this community. Yeah. He's like, all right, you've said more than uh, a lot of the other candidates. Yeah. Congratulations. Here's 4% of our populace. Hell yeah. Mm. Anyway, like we said, we will get to all the Twitter news and Elon Musk's pathetic begging in just a second. But first, let's take a second to thank today's sponsor, Smart News. There's no shortage of information available at our fingertips these days. It can be overwhelming and discouraging trying to keep up. But staying informed doesn't have to be a challenge. Smart News is here to streamline the way you consume media and get you straight to the stories that matter most through delivering critical and breaking news curated just for you. Smart News aggregates local and global stories from trusted publishers so you can stay informed on what matters most to you, from local weather to trending TV shows, all in one app. Say goodbye to information overload and say hello to saving time and getting straight to the news you care about. Easily personalize your feed by following top publishers, adjusting notifications, and getting alerts in your area all in one app. Smart News has big stories from top publications to keep you in the know on everything from breaking global and national news to real-time local alerts and personalized feeds for sports 
sports fans. Download Smart News for free today in the App Store and get the news that matters most. That is S-M-A-R-T-N-E-W-S, Smart News. Search for it in the Apple App Store for your iPhone or iPad or Google Play Store for Android users. All right, back into our news now, because uh, you, you know, you probably expected or witnessed firsthand the chaos on Twitter that has been happening and continues to happen. It continues to grow and evolve, but it really seems as though the social media app has reached some sort of breaking point because now, weeks after Musk took control of the company and completely uh, disassembled it, and only after everyone had arguably the most fun on the platform as they openly mourned its death, yeah. uh, users are actually putting their money where their mouths are and quitting the platform. Um, some are just straight up leaving. Some are hedging their bets by joining other social media apps just in case. It's the next thing. Uh, it won't know, be. A fail safe. It won't be. Uh, uh, we've I've been noticed, through this before. I mean, uh, Hive is apparently taking off because uh, in it's In the past couple of days, than... that one came out of nowhere. It's just, I started seeing like, oh, follow me. Yeah, I squatted, I squatted my name, but uh, it, like, at least I'm going that... down with the ship. I agree with down. you. I agree with you. I don't think that it'll pan out. I'm literally... Why should I change? He's the one that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Precisely. Um, <laughs> I, I only joined it. Oh, actually, Farley squatted the name for our mutual friend. Farley squatted oh, the name, okay. so I took it from him. Nice. Uh, but uh, yes, it is It is funny to, to see people be like, it, no matter what the app is, just that it's functional yeah. is like, oh, thank God. Because Mastodon, for all the goodwill that people have for it, is just, as we've said, not friendly to new users. You are dealing with Americans here, Ma and they yeah. simply cannot wrap their heads Mastodon around it. Mastodon is the Linux of social media, uh, meaning that functionally it's probably the best one, but it'll never, ever, ever get mass adoption because it's just a little too confusing it's like, for the average person. It's literally like, uh, you know how now, uh, if you're a Discord user, you open up your Discord and there's probably 20 chats that you're involved with, and you're probably not active in any of them, but you, you have them there. But you took a long time to find all those and get attached to them. Mastodon, you open it up for the first time, and that's what it feels like. Yeah. Also, they have some weird things with uh, because of the dis decentralized moderation. Um, the mods there, they it's are, like Reddit mods, right? They're like Reddit mods. Yeah. They get a little bit of a power strip about power trip to them. Yeah. Which is uh, basically the opposite problem of the Twitter problem. So yeah, I, I will not be joining Mastodon. I will not be joining your Hive. I will not be joining Plurk and Dinkum and uh, and or Jankum and uh, or uh, Jankum or Gurgler or any of these apps that I just found out. Well, about. that's the thing is is on this show I adopt technology early only to be embarrassed by it later. Yeah. So that is going to happen, and we just have to accept it. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, they call them toots on Mastodon. Never gonna catch on. <laughs> like you. The, you, the fact, I get the toot. I get it. I the get fact it. that you you will never hear. Uh, oh, did you see what the president tooted? Yeah. They will like so. It's just not gonna. As happen. much as I would love for that to happen. Did you see what the New York Times tooted? No, they're not gonna join. Just simply based on that. Also taking precious attention away from a fantastic metal band named Mastodon. I think he named the app after them. Well, they're very good. Is, uh, that's also it's just weird. Anyway, yeah. two notable goodbyes from Twitter have come from the world of rock with Jack White and Trent Reznor both publicly quitting the platform. I didn't know either of them really used it at all, but uh, I, I, interesting. I definitely uh, could see Trent Reznor using it. Uh, I Jack White, that would that would surprise me to see him uh, randomly tweeting. Uh, anything aside... What would he uh, even post? Yeah, like, anything aside from, like, new album out, I can't yeah. imagine. I can't imagine him being, like, sitting on the toilet and being like, I had a funny thought today. The only musician worth following is the Eve Six guy, and he has hinted that he's on the way out. So, yeah, yeah. and Weird Al Yankovic. Yeah, he does post a lot. Of, yeah, you're right. And of course, Azalea Banks. I think she's banned, and and I think that Musk specifically would not allow her back on. She's had a lot of say. Azalea Banks say. might be completely insane, but her music, pretty good. There's something to be said about uh, people who don't have yeah. certain parts of their mind working, but uh, are flourishing in others. Anyways, the one that seemed to strike the biggest nerve with Elon was, of course, Trent Reznor, who is not only a genius musician, but also someone who has, time and time again, embraced change, forward thinking, and the evolution of being able to connect with your fans. I mean, the dude beta tested some of the most widely adopted marketing tactics in the music industry yeah. over the past Him 20 years. Him and David Bowie were like the first two musicians to like joined the internet basically. Yep. And they were like pretty close friends at the time too, so Yeah, uh in in the early 2000s it was Trent Reznor and uh and Radiohead 
that they were the first ones to A, give away music for free, yeah. B, create some kind of viral moment around it, or C, create an entire multimedia experience based on uh, their releases. So again, a forward-thinking person who uh, also um, scored uh, a dystopian social media movie. He's a great composer. Yes. Suffice to say, it would feel pretty terrible, billionaire or not, to be on Trent Reznor's bad side. He's also a very physically intimidating person he, as well. Yeah, it's not fair. He is... You're supposed to look like a weird, like, you know... Trent Reznor will kick like, your dad's ass. Yeah, he's, uh, yeah, he's scary. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the fact that Elon reacted to this announcement specifically would indicate that he is, at, at the very least, a little upset that one of his heroes outwardly despises him. Or as uh, writer Luke O'Neill put it, Trent Reznor saying you suck is one of the worst things that can happen to a man born in the 1970s. Yeah. Yeah. So what's probably more infuriating are the countless Elon simps who either don't know who Trent Reznor is or in some cases think that his cover of Hurt by Johnny Cash sucks. Which, if that's trolling, you win. That has been a funny joke for a while. That has. Eve Six made the joke uh, back uh, towards the Elon stance. And Trent Reznor did, for the record, say that the Johnny Cash version is actually the definitive version of the song. Yeah. Much like how Bob Dylan said that the uh, Jimi Hendrix version of All Along the Watchtower was the definitive version of the song. Yeah, there's a couple songs I believe that like Aretha Franklin also took from that were previously written from people who were still very much alive who mm -hmm. were like, I couldn't have done it better. Yeah. It is her song now. So. There you go. But Trent Reznor is not the only person who has hurt Elon Musk's feelings, we, didn't we? Because after an impromptu Twitter poll late last week, Musk went ahead and reinstated former president and future president <laughs> Donald Trump. He's coming back to Twitter, baby. Hey, roll out the red carpet. Hey, Mr. Trump, here you go. The all the woke libs are gone. Bring hey. Here he comes. Here he comes, folks. Yeah, he, hey, she's all she's freshly waxed up, Mr. Trump. Mr. Trump, right over here, right this way. Where, where, where is President Trump? Huh. huh. So yeah, this poll, the whole, all the fuss around getting Trump back on Twitter. It had the bonus side effect of resurfacing. All the batshit insane tweets that Trump ever wrote that were gone. They like, were gone. Like tears in the rain, only going around in screenshot form. They're back, baby. Yeah. And everyone They're was real. sharing the, the, the best ofs, and it was a fun time. Yeah. Uh, so obviously, the decision to let Trump back onto Twitter is extremely divisive. For very good reason. He was, uh, yeah. Why was he? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, even the stupid poll said as much, considering how close the end result was. Uh like Even 48 to 52 or something like that. Yeah, and this is all just mostly Elon Simps replying. Yeah, this is a, uh, a completely like dumb poll, but it's still fascinating that it was so split. Uh, well, Elon has said as much. He yeah. believes that there were bots involved to oh, uh, try to try to make uh, make the result no. Well, uh, he has access to all of the data to prove that. So I'm patiently yeah. awaiting uh, the data. all of this evidence. Anyway, there's obviously a reason why the President of the United States was banned from the platform. In case you all forgot, though, uh, among a litany of other things, he inspired, supported, and helped to organize and facilitate an insurrection on the United States Capitol with the goal to overturn democracy. Hey, remember that? So yeah, well, Trump is one of the, the goats when it comes to shitposting. Yeah, undeniable, by the way. He's also proven how dangerous both he and his followers can be. Yeah. Now, however, none of that really matters right now because, because Trump's hey, come hey. on, get over here, buddy. Hey, yeah, uh, we all need a break from Florida, right? He's got a long Welcome walk back to Twitter. He's taking a long walk. He'll be here in just a minute. Mm -hmm. Trump, 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 Trump. Come on, buddy. Come on. Where are you? Where is he? Where is he? He's he's coming. Several days later. Wow. It turns out that he still isn't here, which he's, is surprising. He's coming. He'll be here in a second. But yeah, he uh, Trump has, uh, at least when we filmed this, failed to Gonna keep the seat warm over here. Materialize on Twitter.com, a no longer free website. Uh, he hasn't really, it is still free, by the way. You don't have to pay the $8. Mm. The, yeah, the only real acknowledgement uh, is a video clip where he's just asked, hey, are you going to return to Twitter? And he says, I don't see any reason for it. And he does kind of shit talk Elon. He's like, uh, it's, it's a little messy over there, a little chaotic. Yeah. Uh, Regardless, um, Savage. Still, that didn't stop Elon Musk from doing what he does best, publicly debasing himself. Now, this time around, he stole and shared a meme from a loyal follower, uh, without credit, of course, which depicts a monk labeled as Donald Trump being tempted by a, a horny maiden whose nether regions depict Twitter.com. He's posted this same meme at least one other time. If you go to the Know Your Meme page, uh, it 
all, it, it, you can see the trends of this meme actually uh, having cracked only when Elon talks about it. So this is a favorite of his, yeah. uh, which seems to me like he's dealing with temptation a, on a constant basis. Yeah. And as we all know, he is a habitual impregnator, so... Yeah, this man is full of cum. Yes. Elon added above the meme, quote, lead us not into temptation, which would imply that Donald Trump is actually struggling very much with staying away from this platform that he holds so dear. He get he got a whiff of Twitter, and he was like, oh, he was looking like Bugs Bunny floating towards Twitter, but no. I mean, the meme would imply, and a second meme posted by Elon would support this, that Elon Musk wants to be fucked in the ass by Donald Trump. That could also be the case. <laughs> which, which, you know... Um, wouldn't be as surprising as some may think, considering the way that Donald Trump has publicly talked about dealing with Elon Musk. I, if I, I said, get down on your knees, he would have done it. Yeah. So there you go. But uh, yeah, in reality, the reason Trump is not coming back to Twitter yet is because he's still trying to milk whatever monetary value there is that's left in Truth Social. Because the second he pivots back to Twitter, Truth is... It's done. What's the point? There's nothing that will be redeemable. It's going to fall apart. All the investors are probably going to be upset about that. Though it's not like stiffing investors, it would be a new thing for Donald Trump. It's sort of how he has done business. It's pr pretty much rule number one of the art of the deal is uh, leave everyone else involved in the deal feeling regret. In the decades prior, uh, people would write this off as a, oops, I made a mistake. Whereas now people are probably going to want to well, have get, some favors. Get in line. A lot of judges, a lot of attorney generals. Uh, I'm going to be back. I got a lot of favors. I, I'm going to be doing weekly court visits till the day I die. So get in line, buddy. Yeah. So, yeah. Still, though, it's, it's kind of funny to see Elon so desperate. It, it sucks that he so obviously is courting the worst people that the platform has to offer. Uh, uh, noticeably only interacts and promotes uh, specifically the worst people. And the logic of it is bad. The whole reason Twitter got rid of a lot of these people in the first place was that their presence was driving away more people than it was drawing in. And in some cases, uh, demonstrably incited violence. Yeah. But yeah, I take uh, Jordan Peterson, for example. Uh, he, he, he wasn't suspended. All he had, he to, had to do was delete a tweet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he was not happy about that. We covered that. Mm -hmm. My tweet violated the Twitter rules of yours, woke moralist. <laughs> Real person. Yeah. Serious person. But yeah, Jordan Peterson uh, got his account back. Yeah. And boy, I, I think he's he missed been, it. He's been saving these in his notepad because the man was tweeting at a, a rate that... I, Isn't healthy. Not healthy at he was, all. At one point on the first day he was back, he was posting every three minutes. I think Cody Johnston of uh, Some More News like actually did the math. He's like, he has tweeted every three minutes for the past like three hours. Well, that's because for the past month, he's been in that weird sex suit that milks his cock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you'll, his, you'll his, his daughter set you'll, it up. You'll well. figure out the joke. Uh, anyways, yeah. Peterson, he's done what he does best. He's immediately just made himself look pathetic and lame and weird yeah. ever since returning to Twitter or at least reminded everyone that he is weird and lame. Yeah, I think the uh, ban might have actually done good things for him and he maybe should have stayed off the platform. I can, yeah, this this guy, he's a strange man and I don't think being on Twitter was good for his health. If anyone ever uh, needed to touch grass more, it would... Yeah. 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 Uh, anyway, yeah, it, He's back, so uh, that's cool. But still, to get the idea of just how pathetic, how pathetic Dr. Jordan Peterson is being, check out this reply to Elon's tempting wench meme. You really are pretty damn funny, Mr. Musk. Thank you for running such a wonderful website. Uh, this reply alone further solidifies our opinion that Elon's only goal with all of this is for people to like him and tell him that he's funny and good. It really reads like a tweet that Peterson was forced to make. Just be like, if you laugh at my jokes, you can come. You can stay on Twitter as long as you want. Oh, very funny, Mr. Musk. Another banger from the desk of Elon Musk. Yeah. Oh, you know who else is back? Oh, who? Kanye West. Yeah, d yeah, yeah. He's already like teasing. First tweet back. Shalom, smiley face. Yeah. Elon Musk. Boom. Click like. Very cool. Very cool, Mr. Musk. Do very they cool. not see the real world ramifications of their actions that are constantly playing out, not only in this country, but around the world. The only real world uh, ramifications I see is that Kyrie Irving has an army of dudes in purple who show up to all of his games and uh, chants. I don't know what they're chanting. Uh, probably something about basketball. Who knows? Yeah. I'm sure, it's harmless. Yeah. 
Anyways, as for Twitter's future, we're still not sure. But there's only so many times that everyone can flood back in and spike that traffic every time Elon does or says something stupid, causing him to then say another stupid thing, which is Twitter traffic at another all-time high. Right. Yeah, um, it's car crash traffic. Yes. Uh, we are rubbernecking. Uh-huh. Uh, meanwhile, the financial future is still highly questionable, with more and more advertising opting out of Twitter as a platform for their marketing. Uh, one advertiser who put a pause on nearly a million dollars worth of spending released a statement as to what really inspired their decision. And it provides a good bit of insider perspective while desperately explaining that this has more to do than ideological issues. Now, here's some examples. I had my team keep our campaigns live for two weeks post takeover on the bet that efficiency would improve with fewer advertisers and the risks were managed and probably overblown. I was wrong, and I think the things we saw in these last two weeks means many more advertisers will bail on the platform in the coming weeks for non-ideological or virtue signaling reasons. Performance fell significantly. CPMs didn't drop, but our engagement went way down. Maybe it's a shift in users on the platform. Maybe it's ad serving related continues, serious brand safety issues. Our organic social and CS teams got dozens of screenshots of our ads next to awful content. Replies to our posts with hardcore anti-Semitism and adult spam remained up for days, even when flagged. Our entire account team turned over multiple times in two weeks. We had multiple people, AE, AM, analysts, creative specialists supporting our account, and they all vanished without so much as an email. We finally got an email with a name for an AM last week, but they quit and we don't have a new one yet. Ads UI is very buggy and login with SSO and 2FA broken. One of my campaign managers logged in last week and found all our paused creatives from the past six years had been reactivated. Jesus. <laughs> campaign changes don't save. These things cost us real money. Holy shit, yeah, just all your drafts live. What the fuck? And you remember those uh, marketing budgets you had attached to them? We're kicking those babies on. I mean, just the part about uh, not knowing who your fucking contact is. On you're your account manager. You like, have no contact. That, is, yeah. that is pretty fucking big. Like, knock, knock, hello. We're, we're spending $750,000 on your website, and we literally can't get a hold of anyone to uh, take down the ver the blatant anti-Semitism th that's attached to our fucking ad spends. Also, we here at Universal Pictures are very upset that the entire movie Hackers was uploaded and Fast 50 and Furious. <laughs> that's a whole separate story because apparently that has more to do with uh, the content ID backend is apparently not working, so they're having to do everything manually. Oh. So people are uploading entire movies. And uh, another big problem that is uh, a problem that's happening currently is uh, illegal World Cup streams are popping up and they don't have an automated system in place to apparently take care of it. That's pretty cool, actually. That's like the old days. Those were a bunch of those wires that we pulled out that I thought yeah. were really expensive. Yeah, that's like that's like the old days of Twitter. It's It also has the added uh, benefit of uh, costing them an absolute fuck ton of bandwidth. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, the author of the, all those uh, complaints added later in an update that, quote, our analytics team is finding discrepancies between campaign data from the Twitter ads API and the UI. Can't figure out which is correct anymore since we don't have a team. So now they're not even getting accurate data on the campaigns that they're running. Okay, so yeah, the, uh, a lot of unseen issues. Like, oh, I mean, my timeline still loads. What's the problem? Um, there's other things going on in the back end that you can't see. Yeah. But, and it's not just them being like, oh, we don't like Elon. But it's, yeah, these advertisers, they can see, or rather cannot see, and that's bad. Yeah. That would understandably cause them to be hesitant outside of any moral dilemmas. Anyways, let's finish out today's episode with some news that, while shocking, seem to bring joy to countless Disney fanatics. Adult babies. Who have been extremely vocal with their distaste of Disney's recent CEO, Bob Chapek, or D Bob Paycheck, who uh, took over the company during the pandemic, replacing longstanding CEO Bob Iger, who claimed he was retiring. Goo goo gaga. Well, any, all of a sudden it was announced that Chapek had been fired and uh, they're bringing that shit back. That's right. Bob Iger's back, baby. Um, he is back in charge of Disney once again and the crowd goes wild, I guess. Uh, it really does seem as though uh, Chapek was put there to make incredibly tough, unpopular decisions and then get fired so that years and years of mistakes can be explained away very easily. Yeah, it's a classic move. They, The company went through a pandemic where the main uh, income source was shut down. And then this guy was like, yeah, we're back, but also we're going to like double the price and do a bunch of other microtransactions. Anyways, bye. I'll never have to worry about money ever again. Yeah. Here's the guy you want. Enjoy the company.
Yeah, so it appears as though people might be celebrating a bit too early because the fact that Iger is back does not change the unstable outlook for the company, which continues to raise prices on its experiences, has hit a bit of a wall with Disney Plus where they're realizing that they can't spend their way to more customers, and they're dealing with the same financial headwinds as the rest of the country. Amidst all of that, uh, they also have a, a little bit of a Ron DeSantis problem in Florida. And now that he's been emboldened by the vo the voters, uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens to Walt Disney World. Yeah, so even as Iger returns, there are already more restructuring announcements. Means layoffs. Yeah, so it's not all pomp and circumstance. Uh, but here's CNBC with more on this abrupt change. Disney chose to rehire Bob Iger as chief executive after receiving internal complaints from senior leadership that Bob Chapek was not fit for the job, according to people familiar with the matter. The executive change came together quickly, blindsiding Chapek and his closest allies. Disney's board reached out to Iger on Friday without any other serious candidates in mind to replace Chapek as CEO, CNBC's David Faber reported Monday, citing sources. So that's also not a good look for the company, considering they do not have confidence in any internal hires? Yeah. But uh, for their part, Disney released a statement that read, we thank Bob Chapek for his service. Let's stand, Let's get Bob Chapek out here to stand up in front of all, all the fans. You know, my cousin was a Bob Chapek. Yeah, he served for Disney uh, during the pandemic wars. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the board has concluded that as Disney embarks on an increasingly complex period of industry transformation, Bob Iger is uniquely situated to lead the company through this pivotal period. My favorite take on this? Somehow, Bob Iger returned. Yeah? I haven't seen the last, or the return of, I don't know, the third one? The Star War? I haven't oh, seen it. Oh, when, yeah, when Palpatine but, comes but back? But the line, somehow Palpatine returned, is like yeah. the funniest thing. I, I, I almost like it better not knowing what it's in reference to. Yeah. Just only knowing Finally, that some line. mystery. Yeah. And somehow, Bob Chapek returned. Yeah. Or Bob Iger. Fuck. Too many, the Bobs. The Bobs. Yeah. Anyway, we'll leave you with some good news uh, from the Artemis spacecraft, which has officially made its way to the moon, Alice, mm -hmm. and has officially entered its orbit, sending back some truly incredible photos in the process. Here's the BBC with more on this. NASA's Artemis spacecraft has arrived at the moon. The Orion capsule swept 130 kilometers, 80 miles, above the lunar surface, and it will now begin to enter a larger orbit. The vehicle was out of contact for 34 minutes during this maneuver, which began at 12.44 Greenwich Mean Time as it took place on the far side of the moon. As the signal returned, the spacecraft sent back an image of the Earth. NASA says so far the mission has exceeded expectations since last week's launch. NASA Flight Director Zebulon Scoville cool yeah, name. <laughs> said this is one of those days that you've been thinking about and dreaming about for a long, long time. This morning, we just saw the Earth set behind the moon as we take the next human-rated vehicle around the moon, preparing to bring humans back there within a few years. This is a game changer. What I like about NASA the most uh, in the past two decades is that they under-promise and consistently over-deliver. Which, that's not just a good strategy for making space stuff, that's a good strategy in life. Yes. Leave them expecting nothing, and then when you show up with a helicopter yeah. on the on Mars. Ta-da! They're like, we brought this helicopter. We don't know if it's going to work. By the way, it's been flying for days. Yeah. Um, it's a better way to do it. Yeah, I appreciate it. And uh, again, this is fucking cool. I don't care. I know this is uh, spending on things that people might not think are useful, but uh, I think it's fucking cool. And it also provides us with uh, technology that you don't even know you need yet. Yeah. So... Anyways, uh, please, if you if you can, if you're able to, uh, there's a link below to where you can do donate to the Colorado Healing Fund. Uh, we really appreciate anyone that can support that. Uh, in the meantime, we do have two uh, recent episodes for you to watch. We have an episode of Weekly Weird News and an episode of News Dump. Uh, again, you're just catching up on everything that's been happening. But, you know, if you want to watch them, that'd be great. Take a trip down memory <laughs> lane. Yeah. Right over here. <laughs> uh, more importantly, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, and if you're one of the, the amazing five to 7,000 Leave a like. Please. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. We stand for the loyal 7,000 at every good. NFL game. I proudly declare. I, I squat and then get back up for every single one of the 7,000. Yep. Now the videos are up there. Check them out, and we'll see you soon for some tech news. Bye.